сечить знависку. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This Mass is offered for Reverend George A. Carrig. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I've failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Jesus Christ, holy begotten Son, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God, Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made not the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, ask now of the days of old, before your time. Ever since God created man upon the earth, ask from one end of the sky to the other. Did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire? as you did and live? Or did any God venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, with strong hand and outstretched arm, and by great terrors, all of which the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? This is why you must now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on earth below and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today so that you and your children after you may prosper and that you may have long life on the land which the Lord, your God, giving you forever the word of the Lord blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right, of the kindness of the Lord the earth is full. Blessed the people the Lord has 
has chosen to be his own. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. By the breath of his mouth, all their hosts. For he spoke, and it was made. He commanded, and it stood forth. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him upon those who hope for his kindness to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Blessed the has chosen to be his own. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If only we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore 
and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, I warmly welcome you to this Mass and say thank you for coming. Let me begin with some two pieces of news that we, we can share. I know some of you may already have received it, but Father Jeremy, together with Father Sean, together with many other priests, have been at the cathedral to witness the ordination of 11 new priests, 11 new brand priests. That's wonderful news to the archdiocese. That's new energy, a guarantee that the apostolate will go on. And so we thank God for this very rich harvest. The other piece of news is that very recently, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, declared this Sunday, tomorrow, the world day for all the children. Just like we have the world day for the youth, tomorrow is the world day for all the children. And so many children from about 100 countries are going to gather in the Vatican and they will be with Pope Francis to begin this day that he inaugurated very recently. Isn't that wonderful news that children also have an opportunity to celebrate this? We pray for them. I think the idea of Pope Francis is that children can know where we are coming from know where we are, and know where we are going. In many cases, children don't have this opportunity to know this. And so this is why this day has been instituted. And so pray for the children and continue to support them. Today, on the Sunday that follows Pentecost, Mother Church gives us a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity and say happy solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, a very sublime teaching of our faith, a doctrine of our faith. I was trying to go through the history as to why this day was instituted. Why do we have this day on our Christian calendar, on our liturgy? Many years ago, there was confusion about, you know, what we believe. And the other idea is that many people speak about God, but our attempts to explain who God is, these attempts are different. When you speak to the Muslim and say, who is your God? You can't say something about God. When you speak to the Jew and Judaism, you interrogate that, they will again say something about God. Christians, the pagans will say something about God also. At home, we also have the traditional people that practice the faith, I mean, the traditional faith. Our explanation about God is different. And so this Sunday is dedicated to explaining the Christian understanding of who God is, that we can relate with our God well. We can know something about God. Of course, God is a mystery, but we can know something about our God. From Scripture, the Word of God, the Revelation, from nature, again, we can know something about God. From sacred tradition, all these things can be sources of knowing something about our God. Our experience of human life, again, can tell us something about God acting in our lives. 
I think we can begin from the gospel. Jesus, before his ascension, had this to tell the apostles, which is also a pointer to who our God is. Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our God is one, but in three divine persons. That we should know. God is one, but in three divine persons. They are all united, indivisible, co-equal, co-eternal, co-substantial. This is our God, as revealed in Revelation. And so Jesus himself says, baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So our God is one, but in a trinity, triune. The preface that we shall take again will explain more about this. What we say about the Son is what we say about the Father and the Holy Spirit. They are co-equal, they are consubstantial, and they are co-eternal. They have lived all through together in perfect harmony. This is a mystery that needs our faith. The second reading, the letter to the Romans, the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, has spoken to us about something else the role of the Spirit. The Spirit enables us to call God, Abba, our Father. What is the nature of this God? You need to read Luke chapter 15 to get to know more about this God and how God acts. There are three parables there. The parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, and the parable of the prodigal son or the merciful father. What has that to tell us about this father we call Abba? God is merciful. God is loving. God is compassionate. And so this is Abba, father, the God that we refer to. And we should take that into consideration. The first reading has spoken to us again the experience of God in the lives of the Israelites. These were in captivity. And Moses reminded them about God's acting in their lives. God is never aloof in our human experiences. He reminded them what happened at creation, in the Exodus, you know, God journeying with them. And maybe you too can look back in your life and see the hand of God in your life. This week, I graduated at the Boston College. I say, how is that possible? How is that possible unless it is God's doing? How is it that we can have 11 priests, new brand, unless it is God's doing? How is it possible that you can live in your relationship, married, for these many years, unless it is God's doing? How have you been able to survive all the storms of life? 40, 50, 60, 70 years, 80, 90. How have you been able to survive God's doing? This is what Moses did to these people, reminding them of, you know, God journeying with them, God intervening in their lives, accompanying them, a loving God. And to, so today, I think it is good that we continue to reflect upon, you know, God in our lives, the nature of our God, and seeing God acting in our lives. The response to the responsorial psalm has said, Bless the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Whoever has God in their lives and is obedient to God, you know, he stands, you know, to, to live a happier life a more satisfying life. Blessed is that woman. Blessed is that man that, God has, that has God for, you know, his director, one that directs one's life. The Trinity, all these three persons, 
work very well in perfect harmony. We can maybe copy something in our relationships as husband and wife. How do you relate? Do you have any conflict? Copy something from the Trinity. The three persons work very well without any conflict. At the places of our work, again we see we can copy something. The Trinity is a community that works perfectly well without any conflict, each fulfilling their responsibility. We need to learn something in our relationships in the imitation of the sacred Trinity. May the Trinity inspire us to renew our relationships, relationships at home, at our places of work, relationships wherever we are, that they can model, we can model them after the pattern of the most holy trinity. This is our prayer. This is my prayer for you, that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, can continue to be our model through Christ our Lord. May we all stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things we are made, for us men and for us salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For the Pope's monthly intention that religious women and men and seminarians grow in their vocations through their human, pastoral, spiritual, and community formation, leading them to be credible witnesses to the gospel we pray to the Lord. Lord, cheer our prayer. For Cardinal Sean, our Archbishop, that his leadership of the Archdiocese of Boston continues to persevere and succeed through challenging times with the love and the light of the Most Holy Trinity. We pray to the Lord. For our political leaders, that the he calling the calling of God to build a culture of life beginning with natural conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. For all of us that we will grow in the life of the Holy Trinity by our celebration of the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. For all the soldiers on active duty and the first responders that they persevere in faith with the guidance of the Most Holy Trinity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, cheer our prayer. For those being held hostage, we pray to the Lord. Lord, cheer our prayer. For all who are sick and in distress in any way, especially those listed in the bulletin, that they be strengthened by the hope of the Lord's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, cheer our prayer. For world peace, especially conflicts in the Middle East and in Russia and Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. And for all our beloved who have gone before us, may they find a new home in the mystery of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember Reverend George A. Harrod, for whom this Mass is being celebrated. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for listening to our prayers and answering them according to your holy will, through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord, our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim, two, and seraphim, who never cease to cry, out, to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have failed us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Cardinal Sean our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coherent to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Father, who in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not sure.
Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass, mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying God with our lives. Hymn number 210, Holy God, we praise thy name, number 210, and we will sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Sweet. 